with me, be with my mind, to be clear so I can get its message across. Lord, I pray that your word will fall upon good ground. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to open our Bibles up to Romans chapter number 12 tonight. Romans chapter number 12. <clears throat> now, in the uh, chapter previous, um, what, what's being explained is how us Gentiles were grafted in and that we are now able to be grafted into the one true God that the Israelites, that the Israelites worship. Amen. Uh, so that's what the previous chapter was about. Look at um, 11.33. All the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, mm -hmm. and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, and who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, and to whom be the glory forever. Amen. 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 Verse 12, I mean, chapter 12 is where we're going to be. Uh, it starts off, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the first thing I want to focus on is that he says to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. Everybody, after they get um, born again and, and have the spirit of Christ living within them, the next thing that we should be focused on is finding out what God's will is for us yes, in our sir. life. And, and these verses will, will help you find that. Um, but notice first it says to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yeah. Um, we know a sacrifice is um, surrendering a possession as an offering to God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God. On that note of a living sacrifice, we also need to be a living epistle. Yes. To be. So, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You wouldn't want to bring God an unholy sacrifice. You wouldn't want to bring God a dirty, beat up, uh, 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 ugly sheep. You would want to bring him your prettiest sheep. Come on now. It, get it looking all nice before you bring him this sacrifice. So that's why he's saying, present your bodies a holy Sacrifice. Yeah. And then it says acceptable unto God. Um, it, as you live your life, you should be asking yourself, um, is this acceptable unto God? Sure. If you find yourself in a situation, it's easy to figure out if it's good or not. Sure. Ask yourself, would God accept me doing this? Right. It, it's pretty simple. What is acceptable unto God? And then it says, which is your reasonable service. Look at that word reasonable. He's not asking something that is unreasonable for us. He's That's asking right. something that is very reasonable. Why? You would say because Jesus Christ and what he did for you. Yes, All the mercy that Jesus had on you and God had on you, sending his son. Mm -hmm. um, everything that God has done for you personally in your life. Um, we know that we are his property. We went over that earlier. A purchased possession. Amen. That's another reason why we should. Um, we are, it's a reasonable service. Um, look down at verse number two. And be not conformed to this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, it's very important to slow down as we read scripture. Yes, uh, stay focused on these words. If you were to skip over that, you would see this word conform. Be not conformed to this world. Right. Uh, and Colossians 3, 2, it says to set your affection on things above, yes. not of this world. Yes. And what the devil wants of you as a Christian after you're saved is confirmation to the world. Because once he can get a Christian to be conformed to the world, then then there's no difference to be seen right. between the lost and the saved. Right. So after you are saved, that's the next thing that the devil wants from you, is to be conformed to the world. Sure. To, to be a bad example to other people, to lost people. Yeah, um, gender neutral. Yeah, so be not conformed to this world. Amen. Uh, reasons why not to be conformed to this world. We went over this earlier today, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, Amen. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, who God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Uh, we shouldn't be conformed to this world. We should, we're where Christ already. We should be living in good works. Yes, sir. We shouldn't be conformed to this world. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6.19. 
Another reason why you shouldn't be conformed to this world. It says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of Amen. the Holy Ghost who is in you? That's right. Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So if you are conformed to this world, if you're doing things that you shouldn't be, worldly things, my, my. then you're a saved creature of God, then you are bringing God along with you Come into the world. When you're doing things out there that you shouldn't do, you're bringing God along with you. Sure. He lives with inside of you. He is always with you. Right. Um, so be not conformed to this world, yeah. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your hope. Oh, I forgot to give you one more reason. Another reason um, not to be conformed is 1 Corinthians 6, 20. But we are bought with a price. Yeah, amen. But we are we are already a purchased possession. Yeah. Yes, we shouldn't sure. be conformed. We are already we are already gods. That's why we are supposed to be holy, acceptable, and not be conformed to this world. We are not ours anymore. That's right, we brother. are bought in possession. We need to live a certain way because it's reasonable unto God. He's not asking us something unreasonable. It, it, it's our responsibility as believers to be the light unto the lost. People, sure it is. To be a light unto the Christians who haven't been to church in a while oh, no. to, to, to be a good example for the people in the world to look to us and they can see it through our good works. We went through that earlier today too. Okay, so uh, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. Um, the only way to get transformed and renewing your mind is through Jesus Christ and right. through the Word. Come we on, know man. that Christ is the Word, capital W, and then we have the lowercase word, this King James Bible. Amen. That's the, that's the uh, other reason, the way we will be able to be transformed and re renewed in our mind. That's right. Uh, in John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy word. Yeah, come on. Thy word is true. Hey, if we can be set apart and sanctified through his word, then his word can obviously renew our mind. That's right. Uh, you should be able to go um, through some psalms and have your mind renewed, just focusing on some of this stuff and meditating on the word of God sure. and some, uh, some of the beauty that is in there. Uh, go read Psalms 27 and tell me that that doesn't renew your mind. Right. Um, let's go over to Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number four. So we need the renewing of our mind. Um, Psalms 119 says this. The word have I, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Yes. If their word has enough power to give us to not sin against thee, then it obviously has enough power to renew our mind. Amen. Amen. That's right. Achieve Ephesians chapter number four. Look at verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah. Once again, we are renewed in the spirit of our mind through the Bible, That's through right. um, God's word that he left here for us. Uh, let's look up at verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh, uh, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Um, you need to learn Christ. You need to learn how to be like Christ. It's not something that just comes to you. That's you right. need to learn it. Amen. And you learn it through his word. Amen. Uh, if you look through this Bible, you'll see marks everywhere. Get your Bible, mark it up. Right. Learn it. Learn from it. Christ is our teacher. God is our teacher. That's what his word says. That's right. Look down at verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Oh so after your mind is renewed, don't give place to the devil. Sure. Don't be giving the devil opportunity. Amen. Don't be going to a certain place that you know you shouldn't or doing a certain thing that you struggle with. Don't give place to the devil. Right. Um, go over to Ephesians 5 and look at verse 26. That he may sanctify and cleanse it Come on. with the washing of the water and by the word. There it is. So if his word can sanctify us, set us apart, if it can cleanse us, then it obviously has the power to renew our minds. Yes, sir. I, I truly believe that um, in America, people are lacking, and Christians specifically are lacking for, for a true reverence of God's word. That's right. And in doing so, they're, they're lacking true conviction sure. and repentance. If you don't have reverence for God's word, how are you going to get convicted and hence what? Right. Repent. How can you truly right. repent without true conviction? You're missing it, conviction yeah. only comes from the Word of God. That's right. If you don't have true reverence for His Word, how are you going to get this conviction? Right. How are you going to have this repentance? You can't. Uh, not having those three things 
Reverence, conviction, repentance, it equals a lukewarm church. Sure. Right? Now, we know Come that God now. hates you being lukewarm. That's right. He wants you either all the way for him or all the way not. That's he doesn't right. want you being Come on now. halfway. Hey, um, man. On that note, let's go over to Jeremiah 29. Oh, my. Jeremiah chapter number 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Um, this, this story here, uh, we'll get the first verse. And to all and the end of it, and to all the people who Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. We know that Babylon can be a picture of the world. Right. This is a picture of you being held captive to the world. And, and if you, the way to come out of it, if we look over at twelve, look at what he says. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. Right. And I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me uh -huh. and find me. When you search for me with your whole heart. Oh my. The Lord doesn't want a little bit of peace of you. The That's Lord right. wants your whole heart. Amen. He, he is not okay with people stepping in with one foot and having the other foot in the world still. That's right, he preacher. wants the oh. whole part of you. He wants you to come to him before you with your whole heart. Look at the next verse. And I will be found of you, oh saith the Lord. Glory. And I will turn away your captivity. There it is. So if you come before God with your whole heart, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, what you've been doing, if you come before him with your whole heart with repentance, then he is gonna he is gonna bless you. He's gonna take you out of your captivity. Yes, yes, amen. And, and if you don't, just like we were talking about earlier, the child of disobedience, the child of wrath. Right. Go down to verse number eighteen, and I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine, with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to be cursed. In astonishment and in hissing and reproach among to all the nations, whether I have driven them. My Look, mind. because they have not hearkened there unto my words. Right. After you become the child of disobedience, you're going to become the child of wrath. My mind. You've been hearing in many messages from this preacher and myself that God brings storms in your life for not just not just to to, to keep you back, but to get you going a yeah. certain way yeah, in which brother. you need to go. Let's go over to Job, chapter number two. Joel chapter number two. Hosea. Joel. Amos. Joel chapter number two. And look at verse number 12 when you get there. So again, we just saw that God does not want a little piece of you. That's right. He wants your whole heart. He doesn't want some... Uh, uh, Fake facade. He wants the real thing. Right. Look at verse 12. Joel 2, verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn, your, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Right. And with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. If you want to get close with God, you better learn repentance, and you, you better come before him with fasting, yes. weeping, and mourning. But right. above all that, he wants you to come to him with your whole heart. Right. Look at the next verse. And rend your heart and not your garment. That's good. And turn unto the Lord your God. Uh, just like we saw over there in Nehemiah, when, when he is burdened about something, he rents his clothes. Yeah. Um, I've heard him say it many times when uh, a prophet rents his clothes, other people rent their clothes and put dust upon their head. Um, they're showing a sign of distress. God is saying here, Rend your heart, not your garment. That's right. What he's saying is he doesn't want this uh, this, this fake thing. Sure. He, he is sick of you just looking like it. He wants you to actually rend your heart and come at him fully. Amen. My it's mind. like a, 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 a Burger King Christianity, right. you know? It's right. this fake thing. That, yep. that, it's a that lukewarm church. God doesn't want that. He wants your whole heart. You can find it all over the place in your scripture talking about your whole heart. Right. A lot of times where it says heart, it says whole heart. Yeah. It's not saying halfway. Nope. You know? Let's go back to let's go back to Romans chapter twelve. Romans chapter twelve, verse number two. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. You saw what not to be conformed, you mm -hmm. saw what is to be renewed, and then look at that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, that shows you three distinct wills right. of God in life. Some people say you're either in the will of God or you're not. Kind of, but 
it says here that there's a good will, right. an acceptable will, and a perfect will. That's right. The good will is obviously before the acceptable will, so it's not even acceptable unto God. It's a good will because you, you, you've accepted Christ as your Savior. That doesn't mean you're being an obedient child. It means you're living however you want to. And then, so, you may prove what is renewing of your mind. You may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the good will is a will that is just living a good life that isn't even acceptable unto God. The acceptable will is living a good Christian life that God will accept. Right. And then the next will is the perfect will of God. Yeah, That's what is. we all need to be to be striving for yeah. and wanting to Help be us. is the perfect will of God. And, and we can only get there, uh, Lord willing, and being submissive to his word. Amen. Um, let's go over to Psalm 37. Psalm chapter number 37. If you put Romans 1 and 2 with Psalm 37, uh, it, it will give you a real good ability to find God's will for your life. Yeah. Psalm 37. Let's look at verse number 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need to do is trust the Lord. Yeah. We know in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him, right. and he shall direct thy path. Right. Let's look at verse number 4. If you do these four things, with Romans 1 and 2, I guarantee you, you'll be able to find God's will for your life. Number four, delight thyself also in the Lord. Amen. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Uh, delight is like finding uh, good pleasure in something. Right. Delight thyself in the Lord. Meditate on the things he's done for you in life. Yes. Meditate on the goodness of his word. Yes. And Amen. the goodness of our, his, our Savior, his son. Look at five. Commit thy way. Unto the Lord. Yes. So we need to trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. We need to delight ourselves in the Lord. Yes. And commit our ways unto the Lord. Amen. The last thing we need to do is to rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Yeah. Isaiah 40, 31 says this. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. And not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Yeah. So we need to trust in the Lord, delight thyself in the Lord, commit thy ways unto the Lord, and rest in the Lord, and wait patiently. Yes. Uh, seek for his will for your life. Study yourself to show thyself approved. A workman, I mean, you need not to be ashamed. Right. Let's go back to Romans 12. Twelve, and we're going to read through 1 to 5. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, to the word of God, mm -hmm. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, mm -hmm. but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, mm -hmm. so we, being many, are one body in Christ. Amen. And every member is one of another. Every single one of us has a different walk in life. Every single one of us has a different perfect will from God in our life. It is a um, design blueprint specifically for you. Right. I'm not sure exactly what God wants for you or you or you. I can only figure that out for myself. But it, it shows us here in Romans that there are many different spots. There's many different gifts. And we need to focus on Romans 12, 1 and 2. With Psalm 37, yeah. and it should give us a, a good help in finding God's will for our lives. Amen. That is it. Amen.
No, why don't you close in prayer and I'll cut this off. Lord, we thank you for all things. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you that we're able to come before you and worship you. We thank you um, that you can open up your word to us, Lord. We pray that you would um, speak to us this week as we study and as we read your words. I pray that you would help us as we each go our own way and that you would be with my niece tonight as she goes out to the movies and keep her safe and let her to have good fellowship with her friends. We thank you for all things, Lord. We thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.